Let's state a theorem for finding the limits of sequences and then do one or two examples. Our theorem says that if the limit as x goes to infinity of a function f of x is finite and equals L, and we use f of x to define a sequence, a sub n equals f of n, then the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n equals L. Maybe that's a little cryptic. Hopefully, we can make it less so. Ordinarily, when we have a sequence, it's defined in the following way. A sub n equals some expression involving n. And what this theorem says is that you should treat this as if it were a function. And then find the limit as n goes to infinity. So for example, a sub n equals n squared divided by e to the n. Let's ask if this converges and if it does, what it converges to. This theorem says that we should think of this as a function and then take the limit as n goes to infinity of this function. And the advantage of thinking of things in terms of functions is that for functions, we have a powerful limit finding tool, by which I mean L'Hopital's rule. This is an indeterminate form as n goes to infinity, n squared goes to infinity, and e to the n goes to infinity. L'Hopital's rule says, try taking the derivative and see if that helps. This is still indeterminate, 2n goes to infinity, e to the n goes to infinity. But if we use L'Hopital's rule a second time, now a constant just goes to itself, e to the n goes to infinity, a finite number divided by infinity is zero. So even though we're in a new setting here, we've got sequences instead of functions. 
the limit finding technique that we have for functions continues to work just fine. Overwhelmingly, when we are finding the limits of sequences in this course, we do so using L'Hopital's rule. I'll throw up a slide from my notes. These are limit rules, but in the majority of cases, you're not going to be able to use them. So their practical import is generally pretty slight. What we're going to be looking at almost exclusively in this class is the limits of fractions. But overwhelmingly, these fractions will be of an indeterminate form. That is to say that this limit and this limit usually won't exist. So we won't be able to use this rule. What I have as, sorry, didn't mean to scroll, rule four here, that we can pull constants out of limits. That will occasionally be useful to us. These first three rules pretty rarely. That being said, these are the exact same rules we have for functions. The limit of a sum of functions is the sum of the limits. The limit of the difference of functions functions is the difference of limits. The limit of the product of functions is the product of limits.